presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Eddie in Boca Raton. Hey, Eddie, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. It is a treasure to have TFNN every hour during the trading day to be there to help you, to guide you, and even to give you some peace of mind or like that, that somebody else is there with you while you're while you're trading this crazy market. Either well, up or down. Well, listen, we appreciate you growling and following us out here because we wouldn't be out here, folks, if we didn't have all you guys, gals, tigers and tigresses as clients. And, you know, the market teaches you every single day, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Don't take anything personally. Transform your life. When you refuse to take things personally, you avoid many upsets in your life. Your feelings of anger, jealousy, and even sadness will simply disappear if you don't take them personally. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 239, NASDAQ up 163, SP's up 45. Gold, gold contract trading down $41.60 at 1958 an ounce. We have silver off 22 cents, $22.42 an ounce. Light sweet crude up a buck 69, $69.33 a barrel. Notes and bonds. The 10-year note down 29.6, trading 114.05. The 30-year uh, down a full point, plus 12.6 at 130.02. And King Dollar. King Dollar right now down 33 ticks, trading 103.248. The euro is at 107. The yen is trading at 132. And the British pound is at 122 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? The world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. Now, this is going to be really interesting, folks, to watch how this shakes out. And specifically, what I'm going to talk about is this. So we have intraday here, right, it is a high volume low. And you've just tested the high with tremendously lighter volume, okay? So the high that we're talking about that we're testing here, okay, is the 4,031. We got to 4,000. Well, check this out. This is what's amazing, actually. 4,031.50 was the high of this morning. Now, we just tested it and we're laying right there, okay? That high, the first time up, we had 450,000. Yeah, we had, hold on a second. 600, yeah, 658,000 contracts, okay? Bottom line, we just went in, into that with uh, 206,000 contracts. Let me see this. Okay, so yeah, we got one minute left. So the real question is, is that is it going to basically close under that level? And if it does close under that level in the next minute, what's game is that you can see down the very bottom here at 4,003, you have a high volume low. So when you see something like this, what can happen is that we can come right back down there before the close. Now that's the first part. The second part gets more intriguing. And OK, so that's on a daily basis right there. The next part goes like this. When you look at the SPY, what we have with the SPY is this. The SPY, you can see that the correlation, the correlation is, the, the contraction of volume here is phenomenal, folks, okay? Number one, you're going into 111 million shares. That was the downdraft that was created out here on the 9th of March. We only done 58. Then you get the swing point that we're taking out right now. The swing point we're taking out is the 296.45. At that particular level, now watch what we have here. So what you're going into is 112 million. The swing point that you're taking out is 149 million, but watch the consistency here. So on Thursday, no, on Monday, Friday, on Friday, we did 140 million shares. Yesterday, we did 93 million shares, and you're at 58 million shares there. So that's telling me two different things. It's telling me we're either going to see that failure out here today with, with the future, or when the Fed comes out tomorrow with their statement, 
bottom line, we're going south once again because we have a high volume low inside the SPY out here at the 380, okay, as well as all the way down here at the 374, as well as all the way down here at the 348, as well as your high, as your ABC structure, larger ABC structure on the way down. And the X100, Let's, we'll put up the uh, NQs first. You take a look at the NQs. What we have with the NQs out here, I suspect it's gonna be the same number. Okay, so the number that we took out on the NQs, now the, the NQs have been stronger than the, the SPY, that's for sure. And the, the Q, I mean the S&Ps. So the number is 837. And right now, you're uh, 13 points over that level. Now, we went over that level with lighter volume uh, in, inside the futures market. We had 244,000 contracts. We just took that out with 90,000. The Qs also, though, the, the futures also have that high volume low that's laying out there at 12,712. Then if we go into the queues, you're going to see the same setup inside of the queues, meaning that we take a look at the, the dailies, and what you're going to see with the dailies, we just took out the swing point of 309.15, and, you know, there is volume up at this 313, okay? So, we'll, we'll, well, let me go through this one first. So, what you have there is that you're taking out volume of 89 million to get 35. You're going into 63, so either way, okay, this is where this gets really cool. Either way, folks, okay, is that I suspect when they come out at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we're, we're either going to basically fail today on this 309.15, which is pretty easy to do, or what will end up happening is that we get the statement tomorrow at 2 o'clock, and we get the uh, news uh, conference at 2.30. This maybe spikes this high up here, but my take, we're going south. That's the, when you put it all together, we're going south. Gold, we look at the gold contract, bottom line inside the gold contract, gold just loves to do this, man. This, this, it just never ends. Uh, bottom line, it took out the swing yesterday, has the volume taken out in the swing. If we take a look at gold, if we just go from the bottom to the top, right now, you're approaching a .382. I suspect what we're gonna see here inside the gold market, let's put this up, let me see where, let's see, get this volume and then we had rolled on this contract so even even in the roll there it is right there so there 1935 right now you're 1958 1935 is game and 1935 let's see what that is it's probably like a 50 percent or just over 50 percent retracement from the move this is a 50 1932 is a 50 percent retracement of the move and i suspect guess what that's where it's going to go Dollar. What's going to get intriguing here with the dollar is this, is that the dollar came back to, you know, where I suspect it was going to come back to. And what that is, that's its strength, how we came off the bottom. And the high of that strength was the 103.006. Well, we got to 103.002 today. And right now you're still hanging. You have, you have a couple of ticks from that. But... You know, bottom line, I suspect you're going to get a rejection of lower price like that, and the dollar once again wants to go topside. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. 
a frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC. Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up 265. We get the Nasdaq up 171. S&Ps are up uh, 48 and a half. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, it's a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get Basil's opening call. Come over to our website, folks, at TFNN. You go into newsletters, you're going to see it right on the left-hand side, the opening call. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is the savings of $199 or 22%. And you can get it for one full year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593.33. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, okay? When you get Basil's newsletter, you're going to get approximately 12 separate archives so you can see how Basil looks at the market each and every day and how you can understand how to ride the Chapman wave. Basil, how you doing? I'm doing well, Tom. How are you? Good, you a, good. A, a lot of grief lately, and uh, I just want to say that, uh, at least on my behalf, uh, uh, I think that we lost a, a really dear friend, and... Uh, there's there's very little we can say. The speed of with, with which it happened is just unbelievable, and um, all I can say is uh, I know there's you know it, it, the toughest thing about death, folks, is that there's always a void. The void is as heavy as you can get, and what happens is that the um, it affects everyone differently, and you know there's there's uh, to me there's always this void and. You know, no matter what words you say, they're never enough, man. I mean, that's it's like, wow, man. Okay, um, yeah, it's like, are you kidding me, man? At least, at least he's left us with not just memories, but a lot of technical indicators. Which is really cool. With I know a lot of expressions that throughout the day we repeat them. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't wait wait for a loss to increase. Just get out when you can. It's just the best thing that you can do, uh, have your choice. So what I wanted to show you is that um, within the, the context of all that I look at, uh, and I use nine period moving average, 14 period moving averages, the MACD, that's the moving average convergence, divergence, um, the slow stochastic, uh, the on balance volume. Uh, and most importantly, what I look at is how prices move down and how if there's a divergence between the indicators. And then I also like to look at other areas of the market. So what's really fascinating for me is that this little cluster, this is on the left side here is the Dow chart. Uh, 
Okay. So we, we, we have long positions going all the way back from uh, 2020, the law of 2020. We we'll try to keep those and we trade around them and we add to them. So on the very short term for subscribers, we, we've been trading for quite, quite a long time now, the three times long Dow. And even though the trend has been down, we've been able to get some really nice big spikes to the upside. And we've gone at profits there. And then if we take it out, we're taken out. If it holds, it holds. But we treat it as if it's a trading position. So we added a trade. Uh, we've done it twice now from the very low. Actually, the day before the low, I think it was last Wednesday, 31,429. But what I really wanted to talk about is you, you're talking about the, the negativity. But what's really important about this is that there's been price movement. If you look at the Dow and you see here, here's the 200 period exponential moving average at 32,900. We, we are still way down at 32,522. So there was a period where the Dow, and you can see in the weekly chart, there was a period where the Dow was absolutely the leader and then it started to pull back. And if I show you the S&P, you'll see that it's very, oops, I typed it into the den by mistake. Let me just do that again. You'll see that the S&P, Right here, and I'll show this in my my uh, the in my show tomorrow in the Tiger Technicians Hour at 10 o'clock. I'll show some of these techniques in greater detail. So here's the 200 period moving average. This time the S&P is right on the 200 period moving average. Plus there's these two little trend lines here, the green and red. I call the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. How many times? Look how many times the price has been pulled back from that level. If we break above it for whatever reason next week, we can get into the 4,000. And 32 area. I think that'll be an important breakout. But now look at this the QQQ, this is the NDX 100, the 200 period moving average, which was like a magnet before, is actually now moving like a propellant to the upside. So the 313.38 high that was made at the very beginning of February. Look how nicely the uh, the index one. This is the daily chart. If you look at the week, the monthly chart, it's not looking good at all. But on the daily chart, this is good. And if you look at the SMHs, and I always like to think that the SMHs, in many ways, are kind of a, a predictor of the general market trend. They're doing very well. They actually went above the high of the second of February of 255.64. So I just wanted to put things into into perspective to say. This is a very diverse market, whereas before we had the Dow leading, then the S&P, then the Qs. This time we've got the Qs that are actually doing very nicely. The S&P is actually lagging and the Dow is uh, lagging the, those two. So there, when we're looking, I don't think this is one market. And I think that's the reason why whatever the Fed says tomorrow, it, yes, it could impact the financials. But I'm starting to see, and this is for subscribers, we're looking at certain areas, I call them under the radar that are starting to work very well. Besides looking at the market, if you look at those sectors, if you're able to isolate, that isolation can keep you in a trade a lot longer than you, you, you'd expect because they are not as volatile on the market pullback. So I think this is a period where stock selectivity is going to be really important. It is, it has been already. And you know, in, I'm always looking for peak Ds. If you look at the gold, that's the fourth highest peak when you start a buy signal to a buy mode, gold did that. It did that peak D back in February, I think it was the second, and pulled back very sharply. And we just got that peak D because today there's a very sharp pullback. So I do see some digestion there, but the weekly chart is in leg D. So if you put it together, there is a chance that whatever the Fed does, the market can interpret it tomorrow afternoon or Thursday by saying, wait a minute, this is very selective because Maybe the financials find some stability, and gold is just telling us that. Uh, I always think of gold as as the place to go to when there's a financial crisis, and that just might say that at least for the moment we might be able to get through the next few days without any major crisis. So I'm looking at both sides of the coin. I can see the downside, but when I go deeper in, I think I'm looking at very selectivity, uh, selectively. The upside says, you know. Um, some things have rallied very sharply off the bottom. So even if there's a pullback, they're still much higher than they were just even a week ago. And that, I think, is important. Yeah, this, this, this is always an interesting time, uh, as the <laughs> Chinese would say, right? Because the, the bottom line is that, you know, they, they saved the banks and, you know, they had to save well, the banks. Right. That's the bottom there's line. A great, there's a great, we know that there's a great cost at what they've just done. And the cost, it'll unfold over a period of time. 
But when you're saving everybody, which is really kind of not what they're saying, uh, we'll see what happens. This is this is a complex period, and I don't think you need to be very aggressive. You don't need to be. Uh, you don't have to put yourself on the line. You put your stops in, and I think you put your position. Well, we on. we know there's not enough money to save everyone. Absolutely, <laughs> that, that, it, never it, is. Folks, no. that's that's a fact. So the yes. real question here is, is that, you know, if we have four top banks and, you know, you, you think that that's going to be it, well, then you got to hope that one of those, the, the four top banks don't make any bad trades. And, and you never want to get to the position where you've shrunk down to three or four of anything. Right. That's, just, that's not the way it should be. Right. So tomorrow Listen, I'll discuss the nine period moving average that David and I discussed so a year ago in great detail. We'll do it tomorrow. Folks, it's on at 10 o'clock in the morning. Check it out. Basil, thanks so much. Have a great one and a safe one. Thank you, Tom. You Stay too. right there, folks. To come right back. And now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 262. NASDAQ's up 172. SPs are up 48. Check this out, folks. This is, <laughs> you know, this is about like the Silicon Valley Bank uh, knew that they were going out of business. Listen, why do you see this, man? The stuff that's going to start coming out here is like a pretty amazing. Okay, so the Silicon Valley Bank to insiders tripled, tripled, check it out, to 219 million before it failed, okay? This is like crazy, man. This is, wow, okay. As Silicon Valley Bank deteriorated late last year, regulators began internally flagging flaws in risk management. The lender ended up, opened up a credit spit to one group. Insiders, listen to this, this is sick. Loans to officers, directors, and principal shareholders and their related interest more than tripled from the third quarter of last year to 219 million in the final three months of 2022. 
Now watch how this shakes out. This is where this comes, really gets wild. The amount of dollar loans issued to insiders going back, that's a record amount, by the way, of loans to insiders going back 20 years. The surge in loans to high figure, to the surge in loans to figures may draw scrutiny. Of course, it's going to be a better draw scrutiny. Um, the firm, one of three lenders to fail this month, collapsed after investors' deposits uh, tried to pull $42 billion in a single day. Now, watch here. We'll, we'll get this. The, the federal... The Fed takes enforcement action or refers violators to other regulators if it finds problems with these loans, said a spokesman for the central bank, which oversaw SVB before its collapse. Before regulators seized Silicon Valley Bank on March 10th, it had a reputation as the go-to lender for tech companies in the venture capital firms that seeded it. The federal interest rate hikes last year took a toll on the lender, whose liquidity was tied up in longer-term government bonds. Now, this is not over, because I'm going to show you what's, what's really going on here. In the most recent proxy statement, Silicon Valley Bank, the parent company of Sil Silicon Valley Financial Group, the parent company of Silicon Valley Bank, before its collapse, said it made loans, check it out, last year to related parties, including companies in which our directors or their affiliated venture funds are beneficial owners of 10% of more of the equity securities of such companies. The bank issued loans in the normal course of business and with similar interest rates and collateral as other customers around the, around the same time, according to the filing. Still, loans in other categories, such as real estate and commercial, grew at a much lower rate, just over 3%, than those issued to the insiders. The loans to executives and other figures surged as the bank Weakness came to light. Last year, the Fed, federal examiners identified a critical problem. The bank needed how to, to improve its tracked interest rate risks. The firm had about $15 billion in unrealized losses. The bank also directed its lending business increasingly toward larger borrowers. And this is where this comes in. Check this out. Including private equity and venture capital clients. 63% a 46.8 billion of the firm's lending portfolio was comprised of loans to clients who received at least 20 million, according to the annual report. So what you have here is this. This is what they did. They lent money to themselves. They lent money to the companies that they own. And you can, you know, I mean, common sense is this is the most, most, most they did in 20 years. Guess what? They knew they were going down the tubes. If they didn't know they were going down the tubes, they knew it was going to get pretty close. That's pretty intense, man. And what does happen, though, okay, so let, let's, I'm, I'm going to dial this back again for a second. And what I'm going to dial it back on, the way that regional banks work, folks, is that most regional banks and community banks will open for the founders that do it, and there is self-dealing on a continual basis. That's, that's how the banking business works, okay? It doesn't supposed to work like that, but that's how it works, okay? You know, if you, go, if you look at any community bank, you're going to see that the community bank, they're going to be in the development business, they're going to be in some business like that, okay? And because then it's a e much easier way in order to get loans at a price that, you know, will be not necessarily tremendously lower on interest rates, but you get the loan. That's, that's, the, that's the key when you start looking at this. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, <laughs> it says, as, uh, you know, the, the difference is, is that the gangsters got to go into a bank with a gun. The white-collar criminals uh, don't have to. The bottom line is that, you know, you just open it up and you say, okay, baby, how are we going to divvy this up? You know, and of course, I'm making that a lot more facetious than it is. But it's the same thing. I'm telling you, I've seen it a million times, man. I mean, yeah. I, <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of trips that are coming down. So pitch it. So even with that bank down, the bottom line is that, you know, they, their companies have the money, they have the money, and then we'll see where the whole rest of this goes. Some of the high volume equities out here today, we take a look at it. What we have out here, you got First Republic is up four and a half bucks. You got Tesla up 13. Advanced Micro is down 63. NVIDIA's up four bucks. Amazon's at 276. You got uh, Charles Schwab up 310.
Google's up three and a half. You got uh, New York Community Bank, that's up 53 cents. Uh, you know, they, and what's, what's also happening too, if you go look at in New York Community Bank right here, let's do this, New York Community Bank, because when you see this, this is like pretty cool. Um, if, you, if you're the bank, this is pretty cool. Meaning that, watch what they got. When, when, they, took, when they took Signature, folks, right? Signature Bank partial takeover by the competitor is notable for what it doesn't include. It doesn't include $11 billion in loans against the class of New York City apartments whose values have tumbled in recent years. They have a, they have a loan portfolio. Part of this loan portfolio is $11 billion. And they're, they're, it's lent, folks, on uh, a bunch of apartment buildings that uh, inside of New York City that you can't raise the rents on. And, you know, they're dead in the water. As one of the... Uh, the advisors say, Christopher Whalen, it's toxic waste, and there's no doubt. So, you know, the, the, we'll see if this gets, you know, to the taxpayer. Um, but he, this is something everyone should remember, okay, uh, to the aspect of, you know, do you really want to stick up for banks? Do you, you know, in, in the aspect of um, more or less regulations? Because one of the, the mind-blowers that, I, uh, I, you know, has been in the marketplace after the debacle of 2007, 2008. It took about seven or eight, ten, ten years. It always blows my mind when f this is right across the board. Folks that have nothing to gain whatsoever from banks, regulations being tighter than LUSA because if someone says that, oh, oh, they're strangling the banks, like, the, these people pile on and say, yeah, that's terrible. They're doing this and doing that. It's, it blows my mind, man, because it's like, how do you, how do you forget something in the, in the course of even 10 years? But it happens continually. It just happens continually that people stick up for big corporations and the corporations are taking them down. It's like, are you serious, man? Because they, they think that the big corporation itself has something to do with being a Republican or being a Democrat. I, folks, you, you gotta think that true. You know, don't go protect someone that has nothing to do with you. Particularly, yeah, it doesn't even make any sense, man. Dow, Dow's up 277, Nasdaq's up 180, S&P's are up 50. Stay right there, folks, we're coming right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Sit down. Dow Industrial's up 313, NASDAQ's up 193, S&P's are up 56. We had a couple questions, and what the questions are, these are, these are, these are great questions because it's like, you know, if you have more than 250 grand in a bank in one account, okay, the bottom line is that then you are susceptible to basically losing that money if the bank goes down. That being said, I don't see, you know, everything going out of business. So if you're in the, what the, what the Fed and Treasury is trying to do right now is have the money stick in regional banks, instead of basically going to the bigger banks because everyone knows that the bigger banks, the probability of the bigger banks not getting covered by the Fed or the Treasury um, are probably, you know, much higher than a regional, right? So if you're, if you're at a Morgan Stanley, if you're at a Goldman, if you're at a Citigroup, if you're at a Bank of America, um, if you're at a Wells Fargo, um, you know, that's really the only place that... I would say that your probability of not losing money, which over, over you know 250 grand, um, is a much better probability. And as one of our targets says, it's 500,000 if you're married with a joint account. So, what you absolutely want to understand is that when Yellen comes out and says that, don't worry, you know we're going to have you all covered. Well, she can't do that. <laughs> That's the there's not the, the way our banking system is set up, folks. OK, is this is that it's a, a fiat system that everyone businesses have to go bankrupt and we have to have these downdrafts because when you do the math behind it, it's impossible. Mathematically, it's impossible that you can have leverage. 10 to 1 leverage, and we give our money to the bank. They get 10 to 1 leverage. It's absolutely impossible that you don't have wipeouts. That's, that's the system that we're in, okay? So in that context, it's absolutely impossible that she can turn around and say that when, in fact, we know the lawmakers, okay? That, that's not the law. The law is $250,000, so let's pitch this. I'll give, you, I'll give you a scenario. The scenario would be that a couple of the big banks, okay, watch this, a couple of the big banks uh, basically get in trouble, right? And then three or four of the regional banks are in trouble also. Now, if the Fed or the Treasury comes out and says, okay, we're going to guarantee all of it, right, what would happen immediately is that our note and bond market would get imploded, so they, they wouldn't do that. That's my take on it. There's no way. What they would do, they'd wipe out the regional banks. That's how it would go. And it's happened before. They, listen, we, we, that Lehman moment, folks, okay, was, and that's why that uh, Dick, I forget his last name, that's why we so flipped out. Like, I can't believe it. You're saving everyone else. Why don't you save me? Well, they just decided that they're going to burn someone. So, you know, the key to this is to stay with the bigger banks. That's the bottom line, you know? So 
I don't think it's going to stop. And as I said yesterday, I think fluid. Thanks, thanks, man. Uh, Dick Fluid. So I think what you, we're going to see. I mean, if I if I go back, watch. Okay, so 1998, 1998. Um, that's the first. That was uh, long-term capital. Then you had the 2007. And we're 2023, right? It's like every 15 years. And what probably will end up happening is that that time frame will keep going down and down and down, level, you know, at, at small levels. You know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. But I suspect that when you have, when you have between 12 and 15 years in this cycle in general, those seem to be the cycles that, you know, basically our economy goes on, meaning. And what, what tends to happen and what's going to happen now, and that's why when people say that, okay, we're going to come into a recession. If you haven't been through this before, what ends up happening is that banks themselves immediately will start lending less money. And the, this is the mind blow because we're not there yet. But let's say that we get into a, re, a recession and you're going down and the prices are less expensive. That's when the banks should be lending money because... They, they lent a million, let's say, let's say this, they lent a million dollars at the height of the market, right? Now, and then the ASIC is down to 700,000. Well, then they won't even lend on the 700,000. That's what's, that's what's so convoluted about the system that we're actually in. But that's the way it works. And that's why you see at the bottoms of recessions why, whether it's funds, whether it's individuals, if they have any cash, they can make a much higher rate of return because the fact of the matter is, is that that's when you're buying and there's not as much lending going on. But if you can buy in, then all of a sudden they start loosening up. I'll use the same thing where it's 700,000. Then you go to eight, 850. Oh, the bank start lending a little bit more. They get to a million. Oh, they're only gonna lend and lend and lend. That's how our system works, man. You know, so it's to the aspect of uh, being safer. I would say that, you know, the big banks are where it's at, man. You know, and yeah, and it's sad for the small banks. Sad for some of the small banks. I'm not going to feel bad for a bank, I'll tell you that, man. Because the bottom line is that, you know, Silicon Valley Bank, um, yeah, that, you talk about insiders. Now, <laughs> this, this statement, Kath, Kathy Wood, man, I wish I heard this. I knew she was coming on Bloomberg, but listen to this one. You're going to love this one, especially where all trade is. Kathy Wood sees a silver lining in her $2 billion in losses, okay? <laughs> Kathy Wood highlighted one silver lining in her brutal run uh, exchange-traded funds through last year. Those billions of dollars in losses will help offset future tax gains. Well, how, first off, how does she know she's going to have any gains? The founder and chief executive officer of ARK Investment told Bloomberg TV she has over $2 billion in losses from selling stocks during the market route. By selling stocks at a loss, those losses can now lower or potentially offset the tax the tax. Bill Woods funds could receive on future capital gains. This is like freaking kindergarten, man. It blows my mind, man. I'm telling you. You know, and she's hearing me. I, I, there's this, there's the still house, folks. She hangs at the still house. The still house is actually where I develop in Palmetto Park. And it's so weird, man. I mean, it's like, okay, it's over 2 billion right now, which against we can take further gains and then concentrate towards the highest conviction names. Listen. You know, but the bottom line is, is that in her case, guess what? They just keep plowing money into it. Wood explained that her a flagship fund fell from Feb February's 2020 high and reduced its holdings from more than 50 to just 28 stocks, selling stocks at a loss to offset a portfolio gain is a popular strategy used during market downturns to soften the blow of the road. Yeah, give me a break. Two billion, you know, anyway, you know, the, the, the sad part about this is that we are definitely in a um, ear that probably a lot of younger people that are just getting into the market believe this crap, okay? Because the bottom line is that, yeah, we know we all get losses, but, you know, that's not a good, good thing. It's not a good thing to have a loss and then, oh, I'm going to make more money in the future, so, you know, it's going to go against those losses. It's, you know, it's, it's insane. That's what it actually is. Um, yeah. Wow. Dow, Dow's up 303, Nasdaq's up 192, S&P's up 55. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 316, NASDAQ's up 191, S&Ps are up 55, and we have a question about credit unions. Credit unions, folks, are awesome, beyond belief, okay? Um, the, the way that credit unions got put together, okay, our workers getting together so that they can take care of their constituents. That's the bottom line, okay? So there's a, there's a huge difference between a credit union and regional banks, okay? Community banks are close. Community banks should have been like that, okay? But my take on credit unions is that they're awesome, okay? Um, that's the bottom line because what, what tends to happen is that we're a credit union, let's say that, you know, whatever profession you're in, whatever that type of credit union is, you need a car, you need it, you get your house fixed up. They're, to me, they're in a whole different ball game. That's how it was supposed to be, by the way, okay? That's what a community bank's supposed to be. You know, regionals are a little bit bigger, but that's how it's supposed to be. You get a bunch of people that are together, they pull their money, and they turn around, and then they help each other. I'll give you a perfect instance of why I saw this myself because I did a huge amount of business with the Vietnamese when they first came over here. I had, I had shops all over the country. This was 1980, okay? And the way they work, check this out, man. This is amazing. I saw it myself. They would come in, families, and they open a restaurant. They would pool all the money in, okay? And they'd just give it to the person who opened the restaurant. And bottom line, they'd pay the, they'd pay the money back, okay? In a bigger context, that is how credit unions work. And they still work that way, okay? So the bottom line is that, yeah, it's the 250 grand. Maybe they get, you know, 
up it, but the bottom line is that I would say credit unions are in a whole different ball game than regionals. Um, community banks are close. The, the problem with community banks, as I, I said a little bit earlier, is that, you know, whether it's the developer, the opening and all that, it, it, there's a lot of insider taking. That's the bottom line. So it looks like what we're going to have here, you're going to have higher prices, you're going to have less volume. Uh, it's going to be a nice tomorrow because it's, uh, this thing's going to get spiked. Always remember, folks, the bear can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night. Have a safe night. Come visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 a.m., and then we're going to have the Fed announcement at 2, and Powell will be on at 2.30. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one. Look at him, folks. <laughs>